I bet you ain't seen that episode of Dateline called Plot Twist where an army veteran had a female found unalived in his bed, so they automatically accused him. He wound up going missing. Whole time, he was already unalive. It's a lot of twists and turns. Come on, let me break it down for you. This is 26-year-old Sam Hur who was accused of unaliving Julie. This is Julie who was found unalived in Sam's bed. So long story short, Sam was an army veteran that came back from deployment. He had about like 60 racks saved up and he had started going to college because he wanted to better himself. Julie was his homegirl that was in some of his classes and stuff because he wasn't doing too good. So she would help tutor him. They grew close because Sam was like a big gentle giant and, you know, she saw him more like a big brother, little sister type relationship. So on May 21st, 2010, Julie was out with her brother Taka and he was planning his wedding. That's when he asked Julie like, yo, I want you to be a bridesmaid, gave her a little tiara to wear. Whole time while Julie was out with her brother, Sam was blowing her phone up like, yo, I need you to come over. I'm in distress. I'm having family issues. Yada, yada, woo, woo. Julie being the nice person she is, she go over there. Next thing you know, she got two pops in the back of her head. So the next day, Julie mama calling and texting her like, yo, what's up, where you at? Because it was her little sister prom day. Nobody had heard from Julie. Whole time, Sam daddy hitting him up like, yo, where you at? Like, what's going on? Sam's friends even became worried because he was supposed to go to a, a beach party with one of them. So Sam daddy wound up sliding to his crib, opened up his apartment, started looking around for Sam, wound up finding Julie in the bed unalived. He went crazy. So he wound up calling the police going crazy like, yo, it's this girl in my son's bed. She unalive, like, and I don't know what my son is. The police like, what you mean you don't know where your son is if he got an unalive girl in his bed? So this is where everything started getting a little tricky. I hope y'all can follow this. So Julie's phone was at Sam's house and they was looking through the text messages where he was asking her to come over. Whole time, everybody's still looking for Sam because they don't know where he at. So they questioning Sam's friends and family and everything. Nobody basically has any clues except one of his neighbors. And it's a couple called Dan Wozniak and Rachel Buffett. They wind up saying they saw Sam on Friday with a dude in a black hat. So police started doing their little investigation work and everything. Started tracking Sam's debit cards and all of that good stuff. They started seeing large withdrawals of money coming out. So they're like, oh, he on the run. It was like 17 withdrawals for like $400 each, you know what I'm saying, every single day. And again, you know he had that 60 rack, so police wound up finding the footage on the security camera from the bank, and it was not Sam withdrawing that money. So who was withdrawing money from Sam's bank account, you ask? It was a 17-year-old kid named Wesley. So they wind up catching Wesley because they were seeing the withdrawals from a certain ATM and then they were seeing uh, purchases of pizza from, you know what I'm saying, on the same debit card. So they wind up doing investigation work. Long story short, they wind up tracing it out to Wesley house. They wind up apprehending Wesley, start questioning him. He's scared as hell. Wesley's like, bro, this ain't even my card. One of my homeboys had gave me this card, told me to withdraw the money, withdraw the maximum amount every day, and then, you know, give him the money. Police was like, boy, that don't even make sense. Wesley was like, nah, dude, it's this older dude I know from theater. He like a director. He be helping me act and everything. Dan Wozniak, he had told me that he worked for a bail bondsman and that uh you know that sam dude was on the run so they had his debit card they had to withdraw money every day he showed me paperwork and everything i thought it was legit police like boy you retarded as hell so mind you police had already talked to dan wozniak and dan had already told them like nah i hadn't seen sam like i don't know what's going on but he never mentioned anything about giving sam's debit card to wesley so by this time stuff ain't adding up to the cops they was like, how you gonna say the last time you saw this man was Friday, but now we have you uh, giving his debit card to somebody else? Dan was like, all right, this is what really happened. Like, Sam came to me talking about he wanted to run a little play on his bank. Dan said that Sam told him to withdraw money from his bank account every day so that, that he could report it stolen and get reimbursed from his bank. Police was like, okay, but where's Sam now? He was like, oh, I dropped Sam off out in, you know what I'm saying, somewhere in Long Beach. So now, as you can see, Dan's story is changing quite a bit. And police is like, nah, this ain't making sense. So they start pressing him even more. While they pressing him, 
um, Dan was like, all right, all right, I'll tell you the truth. Truth is, I knew that Sam had killed Julie and he wanted me to help him get away. And he had threatened me that if I didn't help him, he was going to try to kill me and my fiance. Remember, his fiance was Rachel Buffett. So police just keep hammering her. Where's Sam then? Where's Sam then? He's like, I don't know. I dropped him off and I was in fear for my life and all this, that, and the third. At this time, your story didn't change about three times. And each time you're getting closer and closer to, you know, actually being around the murder. So now they like, all right, bet you don't want to talk. We're going to charge you with uh, accessory to murder after the fact because you helping him, you know what I'm saying, escape and stuff. Dan was like, hold up. Like, my wedding is in a day or two. Like, I ain't got time to be locked up. Y'all need to let me free. i tell you whatever you want to know. Police said, well, you better start talking ASAP. Dan said Sam called him under the influence of drugs and alcohol, and he was really stressed out about a whole bunch of family stuff. He was like, then he had called Julie to come over there and be with him. He said that he asked Julie for sex. She said no, so he killed her. Police was like, this kind of adding up to the story, but it ain't really making sense. So all the while, while they questioning him, they wound up taking his DNA. They was like, yeah, you know, we taking your DNA because we trying to see if it's going to be anywhere in the house or on the bodies, whatever. He was like, well, it'll be in Sam's car, but, and I was in Sam's house, so it might be in Sam's uh, house somewhere. So the police decided to start the bluff. They came back a couple hours later. They was like, oh, yeah, well, you know, why is your DNA on Julie's body? He was like, I was standing right over the body. Police was like, you never told us that you were standing right over the body. So now they really get the hammer in him because this is like the fourth time that your story didn't changed. Dan even slipped up so hard as to say that he saw the two bullet wounds in the back of uh, Julie's head. Mind you, earlier he had told the police that Sam told him that he had shot Julie twice in the head. So now your story changing and you slipping up on uh, minor details that are making a big difference in this case. So let's recap. Dan went from saying, oh, I never seen Sam uh, since Friday. I didn't know anything. Then he said, oh, well, um, I seen Sam and I was helping him steal money from his bank. Then he said, Sam told me that he killed somebody. He needed help getting away and he threatened me. So I had to help him withdraw money. Now he said, okay, I did see the body. I was in there and I did help Sam get away. So police was like, all right, bet. Go ahead and go to this jail cell. You about to get booked on a sex with murder. So while Dan in jail, he wound up calling his fiance, Rachel. Rachel like, bro, what's going on? You got my little brother caught up in this stuff too? Her little brother was caught up in it because he had been driving Dan around the day that Dan had got arrested uh, and questioned by the police. So Rachel, of course, has to go and tell her parents to call off the wedding. She starts telling her friends and everything. While she goes to uh, Sam's father's house, Sam's dad is just like real nonchalant about the thing. Like, how is you nonchalant about finding out that your son just got arrested for double murder, but whatever. So on her way out, she wound up seeing uh, Dan's brother. Dan's brother started freaking out when she told him that Dan had been arrested and for what? He wound up frantically letting it slip that he had some evidence that he was hiding. So while Dan is on the phone with Rachel, she tells him this. Dan started freaking out like, oh my God, no, this can't be found. Like, this is really bad news. My life is over. Yada, yada, woo, woo. Rachel like, bro, what you talking about? I got to go tell the police that he got evidence because if it can get you out of jail, then I'm going to do it. He was like, sis, I'm not about to get out of jail. It's just not happening. At this point, Dan know that the jig is up. So he wind up telling the police, like, look, I need to talk to y'all again. The police bring him into the room and was like, all right, shoot, what you got to say? He was like, I killed Julie and I had killed Sam, but I killed Sam before I killed Julie. They was like, what the hell? Even as seasoned veteran detectives, they couldn't comprehend what they were hearing, but they had to play it cool. He was like, basically, Sam had all this money and I needed it for my wedding. So I had to do what I had to do. They was like, but how did you wind up killing Sam? He was like, well, I told Sam that I needed help at the theater carrying some heavy stuff out the attic. So um, when he got to the attic, I wound up shooting him in the back of the head. Now, that part didn't quite make sense to me because when did you get his debit card and his PIN number? He was like, after that, I left because I had a performance that night uh, at the theater. 
It's crazy. They had footage of him performing that night at the theater. He was unstressed. They said that he put on like one of his best performances ever. Come to find out, he had took Sam's phone earlier when he had killed Sam. And he was backstage during his performance texting Julie like, yo, I need you to come over as if he was Sam. Lured her over. Julie got there like, yo, where's Sam at? He was like, oh, Sam upstairs. He called me because he was in distress too. Let's go upstairs to his apartment. He wound up getting Julie to look in Sam's bed. That's when he shot her twice in the back of the head. He wound up pulling down her pants and cutting them to make it look like a rape and then wrote some shit all over her shirt. So at this point, investigators are stunned silent. He's like, oh yeah, and then that night I had went and performed again because we had back-to-back -back plays. They was like, well, what you do with Sam's body? He was like, oh yeah, I had chopped it up at the theater and I dismembered it and I scattered some of it in the park and his torso and his stuff is still up in the attic though. They was like, why did you do all this? He was like, oh, because I needed the money and I'm insane and then did this sinister chuckle. Like, it was crazy. If you ask me, he was trying to put on and try to lean towards the insanity defense. Sir, you're not insane if you could plan out this detailed murder, double murder, and try to frame somebody else and get somebody else to withdraw the money and all of this shit. You're not insane. You're in your right fucking mind. A sick mind, but in your right mind nonetheless. What make it even more sad is that Sam would have been 27 like two days after... Um Dan got arrested. So Dan got charged with double murder and got the death sentence. Now he's proclaiming his innocence, which is wild to me. Dan's brother, Tim, got uh, three years uh, lenient probation or something like that. His girlfriend wind up didn't get charged. Wesley never got charged as well. So what are your thoughts on this case? Because I think it's absolutely crazy. And Dan definitely deserves a death penalty. But say it ain't so, K.O.